right, and what we have here is a uh, Digitech Vocal 300. It's a vocal processor. Um, and what we're going to do is go over some of the um, basics and programming these. Um, caught a lot of videos on YouTube with guys uh, using this unit, uh, but I've never seen anyone really go past the stock uh, settings. And that presents itself with a couple problems because um, these things are notorious for feeding back with the stock settings. So what you will want to do most definitely is program this as uh, soon as you get it and start working with it. Now this com uh, this particular pedal is hooked up to a, a box unit um, and I have it running through a couple processors. Uh, this is running through a Shure wireless mic system and we have the uh, Beta 98 microphone goes into the receiver, which goes into the pedal. Then it starts going through all my rack mount processors here. And uh, these were essentially just a couple uh, units I had laying around. And um, they help the pedal um, for a couple reasons. Um, this box, I originally built this uh, to pretty much protect the pedal during. Uh, weather conditions and if you start doing enough gigs you will come across an outdoor show where it's raining and um, I ran into a scary situation once where there was a carpeted stage that we played on after a rain and this thing was sitting right on top of it and it was creating a whole bunch of problems where the patches were actually reprogram uh, reprogramming themselves as we were playing um, Luckily, it didn't do any permanent damage to the pedal, and uh, here we are a couple years later. The thing is still working great, uh, thank goodness. Um, but after that, I decided to go a little extra step and make sure that this thing had a little extra uh, protection. Um, to explain the rack mount unit, this is a Furman power conditioner. Very, very important, especially when you're working with... Um, computer processors like what is in the Vocal 300. Um, uh, the misconception in with the uh, conditioner is it's going to st that uh, the conditioner would stop any type of power surge. That's somewhat true, but if you have a powerful enough surge, it is going to blow through this no matter what you have and short out everything. What this is primarily used for is if your current is too low. Um, which is also uh, um, deadly for any type of computer system. Uh, if the current is too low, this thing will actually shut down everything and protect all of your units. Um, so after the pedal, we have a BBE processor. Uh, this is a sonic maximizer. Um, it's essentially a lazy man's e uh, equalizer. It separates the lows and highs just a bit. Uh, it gives you a little bit more of an edge, but what I really like using it for is the fact that it does have a uh, light meter. And uh, you can use that whenever you're playing just to make sure that the uh, that your unit is working, uh, which mine currently is not because I forgot to sync up the wireless mic. And that's a very good green light to see. So there you go. And everything that I have here is running through the left channel. Um, and one thing to always note about a vocal processor like this, uh, Digitex in particular uh, have an issue where sometimes the computer inside crashes. And I haven't had that problem since I hooked it up to the ETA, so that may be an issue with just the cycles that are going into this unit. If it's underpowered or overpowered, it may present problems. Uh, but with Digitech pedals, um, this one, I've seen the Live 5 do it as well, it will just stop sending out signal. Um, everything will look like it's working. Your clip light will actually come on here, but it's not letting any signal come through the output. And what you have to do in that case is just pull the plug on and restart the whole system. Uh, so in order to make sure that this system is working properly, uh, if I hear something through a monitor mix where it sounds like I dropped out, the first thing I do is check my meter here. And beneath that is a uh, Phonics. It's a 
32 channel equalizer. And this has a very simple function. Um, everything below 150 hertz has been dropped off. And that just helps me if I happen to bump the microphone uh, or uh, anything like that. Uh, I use this primarily for a saxophone. Uh, the lowest horn I currently play is a tenor sax and uh, the horn doesn't play any lower than 150 hertz. So anything under that I just cut off and it deadens the sound uh, so I'm not getting any unwanted key noise or anything of that nature. Um, below that is just a Behringer Sonic Maximizer. And I have a gate limiter. I, th there's slight compression on the unit, very, very little. Um, if you want to read up on sonic maximizers, I highly encourage it. It helps clean up my signal a little bit before it goes out to the sound guy. And what I primarily use this for uh, is if I'm in a hot stage with a lot of bleed through, I'll turn up the gate limiter. Uh, to help get rid of unwanted noise. Um, the downside to that is with things with um, uh, higher delays or anything that I would use this pedal for, it kind of chops that off and compresses it somewhat. Uh, so I have to really be mindful and uh, listen with my ears to what's going on and uh, pretty much use your own best judgment on uh, whether it's more or less helpful to have that on in a situation. Uh, but everything outside the Sonic Maximizer, everything comes out. This little wall mount unit here, it's a little XLR. So this, um, you attach an XLR cable to the snake and that goes to the soundboard and the sound man works you from there. Uh, but primarily what we're going to talk about today is the programming of this unit and uh, the Vocal 300 and go over where people usually have problems with this and what is causing it. And this is a very, very versatile unit. I mean, you have a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, for one, you do have the same compression unit right up top. And uh, honestly, the way you can look at this is the same way that you would look at these rack mount units. Um, so consider this as your whole rack mount right here. And each unit is showing you the different rack and you have a compressor limiter that goes into a mic preamp, uh, an equalizer from there, then a gate limiter, uh, your effects bank right here, then you have your delay and reverb and then the expression pedal and that is very very helpful in helping to eliminate some of the feedback problems that you'll get. Um, what you'll notice if you've used this unit before uh, there are 80 patches in total uh, 1 through 40 gives you um, a whole list of the effects and then 41 through 80 is just another um, the, the same effects twice uh, and why they did that, these give you a basic, well actually, let me go to 41, since uh, my 1 through 40 is pretty uh, reprogrammed already. Uh, but what they do is give you a rough template of everything that this unit can do. And honestly, it could do a lot more. There's a lot where you could use your imagination here and uh, really, really make things sound funky. Um, one of the things that people do not know about this unit, uh, they hear the harmonizer and uh, think that you can get, only get two notes out of this at any given time. Um, not only can you program three notes, but you could also uh, adjust the intervals. Um, and we'll get into that later in other videos. Uh, we'll play along with some sound uh, tracks and let you know how to program uh, some of the more common effects that you hear uh, saxophonists use now. Now if you actually look at this, I want you to think about this, there's a lot of effects right here. You have a chorus, a flanger, a phaser, a tremolo, vibrato, strobe, a doubler, 
an envelope filter, a very cool effect, a pixelator, the tune, pitch, and whammy. And right with that, you have virtually every type of effect that a, a guitar player could think of right there. And it's all a matter of um, just, the, with the stock effects, they give you a rough idea, and a lot of people love hearing them. But when you take this out live, it starts feeding back like crazy, and we'll get into that right now. Um, the main concern is, like I said, you have to look at all these like it's a rack mount system. A lot of these rack mounts, these uh, uh, rows right here, have their own gain controls. So if you have a little bit of gain here, then a little bit of gain here, a little, little bit down the line, you're boosting your signal tremendously from other than just the input gain knob. Uh, so starting at the beginning here, what you will do, uh, if you're working with a saxophone, I usually keep this at about 9 o'clock. Uh, trumpet players, I've noticed, have to use a little bit less. Um, and you're probably already familiar with the input gain light right there. Uh, that little light, when you see that come on, that means that your signal is clipping and the compressor is taking over. You do not want to see that clip at all, ideally. Or if it does, you want to see it jump on and then jump off. Um, if it's staying on, you are your gain is too high somewhere, usually the input gain, and it is clipping your signal. And it, even with the compressor, it tends to sound like garbage. So you do not want to see something like that. It's a little hard to see in the video, but I'm talking into my mic, and you can see that red light coming on. And it's staying on pretty steady, and that's because I have the gain up all the way. So with saxophone, I like to keep it around 9 o'clock, maybe 8 o'clock if you have a wireless mic with a preamp. Um, this particular Shure unit does not. It's just a straight signal uh, into the receiver. So like I said, experiment with it. Um, if you see that light coming on, keep turning it down. Uh, so let's mess with just a real simple vocal delay. Uh, the first thing that you'll see is the compressor. Uh, that activates and deactivates the compression unit. I like keeping it on because the compressor unit, unit dropping the signal um, is still better than uh, no compressor at all. Uh, if you're clipping, it kind of covers you depending on how much you have this set. And I like to keep it on medium. Um, if you go high, it really is, it adds a dramatic effect to the compression. And for me, with saxophone anyway, it's an uh, undesired effect. And you could experiment with that and see what you like more. Uh, now what you'll notice, whenever you're on this line, it is dropping, going back and forth through all these parameters. So uh, you have the compressor on, then the type, then the gain. Now that right there is your first hot spot of why this thing feed back, uh, feeds back. And if you follow this down, uh, these knobs, the corresponding knobs, control the parameter up here. So what you'll always want to do with these effects, make sure that your gains are at zero because you do not want to boost your signal at all as you're doing this. Uh, so if you catch gain, the word gain, make sure it is at zero. And you keep hitting your select button to go down the type. Uh, this is the microphone uh, preamp uh, in voice. And this is cool. And you have a list of all the different preamp choices here. Uh, two preamp, monster, robot, overdrive, uh, chipmunk, wizard, grunge, lunar, alien, dark side, lo-fi, and telephone. Um, the three that you want to pay attention to if you're trying to make your own uh, harmonies, uh, this is where you could actually affect your third part harmony, um, is with the preamp. And if you use monster, chipmunk, or dark side, those are all actually harmonizer effects. Um, so that could add your third interval right there, and we didn't even get down to the effects part yet where you could program your uh, second effect interval. 
so that's a little tip right there um, and maybe you could uh, figure out where I'm going with that uh, later and the equalizer here I like to keep everything flat uh, so pretty much just leave that alone I like to control anything here if there is any type of feedback I mean you should be able to pick it out by ear there's a low feedback frequency middle mid-range and high and um, depending on what I'm hearing if I'm using a wedge monitor system and it's feeding back I could pick that out I mean if you've used this thing you know what the feedback sounds like uh, but you could pick it out by ear and just roll back the frequency that you're hearing um, then of course you have a gate limiter which is the same thing as the bottom rack mount unit here uh, what I was telling you before with that knob this last knob if I'm hearing drums bleed through um, you do have a gate limiter here but with vocals uh, or horns um, compressor limiter is a very touchy touchy uh, unit and if you're in a studio you have more time to mess around with that and work with it on the other hand if you're working in a studio you're going to have a guy on the board who's going to be running that on another uh, rack mount system or a fact pedal anyway so honestly I would leave the whole gate off on this it really isn't necessary for what uh, the application of this pedal uh, at, at least the application I use it for uh, so if you want to experiment with that and don't have the rack mount unit go right ahead uh, but Honestly, we don't need it here, uh, especially for like live gigs, things like that. Now you're at your effects. Uh, this was the vocal delay setting, which means that it's bypassing the effects altogether and going down to the next uh, to the delay and the reverb. So you have, uh, think about that, that's another separate rack, uh, rack mount unit for delay, reverb, and effects bank. Um, with the facts, I rattled them off before. You could always re reference them by going over to effects and seeing everything that's available. And once you find an effect that you like, it will start going through all the parameters, if there are parameters for that particular effect. Um, leave it off for there. Then you have the different types of delays, uh, digital, analog, uh, P-Pong, uh, let's see that's all of them and you could adjust the milliseconds the delay all the way up to two seconds uh, now this is cool this is how many times uh, the uh, feed or the delay will actually feed back uh, so if you have two you're going to hear it two times four four times and this can go all the way up what's really cool about this you could actually use it as a pretty primitive looper um, if you're <laughs> as if you're any one of a contortionist you could actually hold a note out while you're on this setting and you would have to go into the effects bank like I am right now while playing and you could hold out a single note and that R hold it will now be looping the last thing that it heard um, and what's cool about that is you could have like a chord tone that you're playing and then play on top of that uh, the only problem is uh, as you could imagine if this is done by your feet and you're holding a horn even with a wireless mic system it is tricky as all hell to get down there so if you can figure out a way to do it please post a video and let me know I would love to hear your ideas on that um, the next effect is reverb and once again you have a whole uh, selection and they're all listed here as well uh, hall garage plate church room chamber space arena um, and what's cool about this there is a little headphones jack in the back which has a slight preamp unit in it um, so best idea if you are new to these type of effects and this type of concept plug it in or plug your headphones in uh, go in a room and just listen to how everything works uh, the better the headphones, the easier your job's going to be with this. Um, now we have the expression pedal. 
like I said, this is very important for help preventing feedback. Um, and you have three parameters that you can set this expression to, which means you could uh, have it pull out uh, any one of uh, the three um, effects that you put in, or th three uh, previous uh, effects that you put in when you're up here. And that's important for things like the envelope filter, in particular the wah effect, uh, which is very, very prone to feeding back. And the trick to it is you can um, set the parameter and let's see you'll want to take the assignment and you could actually have the set it so that you are wait, let me find that for one okay this changes somewhat depending upon what everything up here is but it is actually possible and we'll do this in a later video where I actually show you the little tricks to setting up the wah effect um, it is actually possible to assign the pedal so that when you're playing and if it starts feeding back you could actually pull back on the pedal with your foot and pull that out of the mix it's the same as hitting bypass um, and it's very very effective in that if you're trying to get it to work and it's feeding back just keep adding it and adding it and adding it until you find that threshold where it's feeding back and not feeding back and just pull it right at that point uh, the other cool thing that this can do uh, it, and I like to use this a lot especially with delays and building solos uh, you could actually add the effect in and build up your solos and make them more t intense from there and that's just something to consider um, I believe that Digitech Whammy pedal has something very similar with their expression pedal on that, but it's something to consider um, whenever you're thinking about soloing and working with a good rhythm section where things are getting more and more intense. Well, might as well, you know, go up with everyone else. And that's just a basic rundown of what we're going to be doing in the future here. Um, hopefully, uh, you this will. Uh, let you like open up some brain cells and uh, figure out ways to experiment with this already. Um, I'll show you in the future some of my ideas and things that I've already done and figured out. Um, and hopefully it'll spark some interest and you could uh, create your own ideas from there. All right, thanks for watching.